our last clip, we started to explore the gum tree group and how there are three main groups of gum trees, being the eucalypts, such as the scribbly gum, the angophoras, like this Sydney red gum, and the corinthias, an example of which is the spotted gum. In this clip, we're gonna explore some of the characteristic features of each of these gum tree groups. So let's go for a bit of a walk. Walking through a park in Glebe and we come across this particular tree. It's got smooth bark, so it's one of the smooth bark gum trees that already narrows it down. Now, which of the three groups does it belong to? One way to work that out is to look at the leaves. And in this particular tree, the leaves are growing opposite each other. And that puts it in the Angophora group. And to double check that, let's look for a fruit, that woody capsule, and the Angophora fruit have these distinctive ribs. So this tree with its leaves growing opposite each other and rib fruit puts it into the Angophora group and the characteristic smooth bark identifies it as a Sydney red gum. And the Sydney red gums are found throughout the sandstone country of the Sydney region. Off we go for another walk up another suburban street in Sydney and we come across this blotchy patterned smooth bark. And as with the Angophora, we have a look into the canopy and we see that the leaves grow alternate to each other. So it's not an Angophora and it puts it into either the Corinthia group or the Eucalypt group. We then have to look at the fruit, the capsule again, and this time we find a fruit on the footpath. We go in for a closer look and it's got that urn shape and that is a Corinthia. So this tree with its mature leaves growing alternate to each other and with the urn shaped fruit puts it into the Corinthia group and that characteristic blotch bark identifies it as a spotted gum. This grand spotted gum is believed to be in excess of 400 years old and stands at around just over 60 meters. So that's well past a Olympic swimming pool, well past the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and probably up around the 16, 17 story mark. Off we are around the corner to another tree. It's got smooth bark like the others. We look into the canopy. When we get a close look at those leaves, they're alternative, growing alternative. So we're going to look for that fruit. Now that fruit isn't an urn shaped fruit, and it isn't the rib fruit. So it's in the eucalypt group. This tree with its leaves growing alternate to each other and with a fruit that isn't urn shaped, i.e. doesn't place it in the Corinthia group or with ribs, so it doesn't place it in the Angophora group, puts it into the eucalypt group. And eucalypts are interesting and at the same time challenging in that the fruits of eucalypt trees can be quite varied. The particular fruit of this tree and some of the markings on the tree itself place it into the scribbly gum group. And typically they'll have marked scribbles on their bark. They're quite common in the natural areas around the Sydney region, especially on the tops of sandstone country, those plateau areas of sandstone country.